This is the Pan Wild Podcast. Smoking, dude. Reload, reload. Oh, yeah. Drop him. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Pan Wild Podcast. Brought to you by Phelps Game Calls. Get them close. Today's a special episode. We're going to do a live first time recording uh, in the studio. Me and Mr. Jacob. Jacob. How's it going, everybody? Oh, we're doing good. It's Saturday. Uh, We're going to do a spring bear kind of like dive in. We're going to talk about Washington State spring bear. uh, Draw results just recently came out this week. And then for those folks who did not draw, we're going to give you a couple different options as far as non-resident hunting, go over prices, how to buy them, how to purchase them, kind of some uh, some tips. There's a couple states or a couple uh, units in Idaho that are reduced price, right, Jake? Yeah, I'm a whole forty one seventy five. <laughs> so we get a little different, uh, little discount on those typical units in there, and then uh, we're gonna dive into Washington for everybody who drew those tags. Jacob, we didn't draw a tag. Five points and nothing. Dang it. Yeah, nothing here either, but that's all right. I drew a 19 and ate that tag. So I guess uh, <laughs> off to <laughs> off to one of these states we go, right, Jake? Hopefully, yeah. That's that's the idea. We yeah. Get some some uh, bears on the ground. We'll we'll discuss which state we're likely going to choose and and the reasons that we're going to go with that state. So yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. If- oh shit! Breaking stuff over there. All right, man. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and go back to Washington State uh, for everyone who's joining us here in the studio. Thanks for uh, checking out the the podcast on our YouTube channel. And if you're not, uh, and you guys want to get a, a kind of uh, an idea of what we're doing in the studio, Jacob's got the screen record going, so we're on the computer, and we're just going to go through Washington State and then uh, Idaho and Montana, just because they're the closest states to us that offer a over the counter. Does Oregon offer over the counter, Jake? They do not. They have... It just changed, right? It just changed. They used to have an unlimited. Yeah. There might be one unit that's unlimited still. Okay. You still have to put in for the draw, but that's... You guys are past the application period for that. But in the future, there's plenty of units on the west side, I think, that are zero point zero point draws for non-residents. Okay. Um, And then I'm pretty sure the prices are pretty low, but the application, I think, is February 10th um, for people who are looking to do it next year. Um, and then for the East side units, the ones that I've been putting in for, I think it's a two point draw. So Got it. I had one point this year, so I just missed it. Um, and yeah, that is Oregon. I am here looking at tag numbers and regulations for spring bear. Um, is there any sp- particular Washington discussion? I mean, I was looking at, points and application numbers for Washington. And it, it's looking like point creep, the old point creep oh, starting yeah. to kick in. So yep, definitely Jeff and I were both thinking that I might draw cause it's kind of that, Oh, someone we knew had this exactly. many points last year. And yeah. Drew. Well, my, my wife drew with four last with, year. Yeah. You know? And it took, I took six in 2019. Um, but yeah, you're, you're right there where it's like, you're thinking you're going to draw, but you know, tons of people who don't draw with, you know, five and six and seven. And then there's, we were just looking and laughing at the guy that had uh, 11. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. There's someone who was just point saver. Like I'm going to draw the best tag, even though they probably could have been drawing it this whole time. (laughs) No, or they're just saving, saving the season for a certain year. But, um, no, yeah, that point creep starting to kick in. It's looking like, um, in the one and two point for 2020, Definitely there's grew. hundreds yeah. of applications now in those. Yep. Um, and with 50, 25, a hundred tags per unit, yeah. that's not kicking those people out of the, the points anymore. So if now there's a thousand people in line with four points and below, and I'm sitting at five with a hundred other people that really mm-hmm. shoots your odds down. Um, I think too many people were talking about spring bear hunting on podcasts and stuff. <laughs> There's a couple of them now. Probably spring bear hunting is getting sexy. It's a lot of fun, man. It's a, it's a great time to get out and start, um, you know, just getting into the woods, getting back in mountain shape and, uh, glassing and just enjoying it. So, uh, let's talk, let's just first off, let's talk about, uh, just get this, uh, icebreaker going. Let's talk to these fellers about your very first spring bear hunt. Uh, you drew in 16. I did. And we're successful. Yep. Back Talk to us about that, man. How did you, cause that was back before PN wild back before you kind of really broke the ice on there. You were just getting into hunting. That was my second full year hunting. tag notched. No, yeah. I didn't kill the buck yet. I hadn't killed an elk yet. 
Oh, wow. It was, I'd shot that deer on my grandma's property in 20, actually 2014. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I didn't kill anything 2015, I don't think. Just that first year of sucking. Yeah. And then. A lot has changed since then. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> 2016, I put in for tw- in 2015 for spring bear. Because once I got hooked in hunting, it's like, how can I hunt more hunt and more? more. more. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my buddy has a cabin in one of the units that uh, is open to spring bear. And so I was like, if I have if we can put in together, Mm -hmm. we did a a point or a group application with two points and drew that unit. And if I remember correctly, he had a a new girlfriend that he didn't even get out to hunt that year. Oh no. Just about beat his ass. (laughs) Um, Blame it on the chicks. He's just not hunting's not his priority all the time. So he does it when, when he has time, but yeah, apparently that was not the the chicks not yelling at him. And she, and she was a little bit of a nut job. So I was like, <laughs> looking back, I'm like, dude, you wasted a tag. You wasted it. Um, but no, I, I hunted a lot that year. I'm trying to think what I was doing. Probably just being a bum, trying to hunt as much as possible. Yeah. Um, but that, unit was pretty tough. Um, it's pretty timbered. Mm-hmm. There's logging and just cutting your teeth on where a bear's going to be in the springtime. When are they going to be out? And I think, I think I ended up getting a tip cause I was like spending a lot of time in a burn that had happened, I think the year before, mm. cause 2015 was that big fire year. Yeah. Okay. And I was spending time in that burn. And I just think it didn't think it yeah. recovered by then. Yeah. There were some good looking spots and I think Definitely. I found some bear sign, but I was like glassing these huge open spaces where it's like there should be bears out here but i think it just hadn't recovered quite enough yeah. we were in there the next year after you because my buddy steven drew and then we went in and kind of hit some of those same burn countries and it was beautiful yeah it looked there was no animals in it, it just looks yeah. there was no deer there was no moose and like in those areas you're like thinking you're gonna see a big bull or mm-hmm. uh, there was no no animals it, mm-hmm. it was just like void i'm not sure what was uh why? But it looked beautiful. Tons mm-hmm. of flowers and the grass was green. It just, the animals weren't back in there yet. Which is yeah. And it might be good curious. now. I just haven't spent any yeah, time. It's been in five there. years since we've been over there. Yeah. And, um, just the availability of, of huntable land in there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure like you can hit it hard and, and kill a bear, but I don't think it's the units that we put in for now. It's more like, yeah, you're going to see a lot of bears yeah. and you're going to be able to pick a really good bear. Yeah. Um, which is what we were shooting for. And that's the reason, I mean, I could have, probably drawn the unit that I first drew another time by now if Definitely. I can put it in for it. But yeah. Um, well, cause that unit also offers a lot more tags, a lot more tags. And yeah. So when I killed that bear, I think it was in May, it was like Memorial day weekend, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it was the last weekend I think I had to get out and hunt that tag. And I made it as far out this road in my little red Kia as I could <laughs> and parked. And, um, it was, more on the heavier timbered side. I mean, I took you guys to that yep. spot where I killed yep. and you can, it's a small area. You can only see so much land. And, um, so I got up there and I'm glassing. And then the whole season I've been like glassing hard for bears. And in that burn country, you see a black dot and you're like, Oh bear. And then yep. it's a stump. It's a stump. And when I first, and I think it was the first bear. I think I even, even ever saw in the wild. Really? That bear that I ended up shooting. Wow. And so when I actually saw it, you you realize, oh, you don't really have to glass for bears. It's more like you see it and verify it. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's pretty rare to be looking through your binos, unless you're behind glass and you're looking a long way off. You usually can kind of pick something out and go, I think there's a bear over there. And then yeah. you throw your binos up and verify it. But I didn't realize that at the time. So I think it was only like a 500 yard Stock. straight well 500 oh, okay. yards across to where this bear was at and i see it kind of moving downhill and i just like picked up and moved because you've learned spring bear hunting that they don't stop moving in the springtime Definitely. they're just like milling around oh, yeah. like crazy so it was across this little i was kind of on a point and there's a little valley to another face and this bear was moving downhill I recorded this hunt actually. Now that I think about it, it's, it's on the YouTube. I think. I think so. It's not a very good film. So yeah, <laughs> take that as you will. It's a handy cam and in my uh, video skills back in 2016. But I dropped down, got kind of in between where the bear. I saw the bear go down into the brush and and where I could like set up for a shot. I think it was like 250, 300 to where it was, mm-hmm. and I was fairly comfortable with that distance. So I actually started ripping on a 
uh, fawn distress call. And then all of a sudden there's a bear a hundred yards below me. And I, I think I actually got the camera to record for the shot, but I didn't zoom in or anything. And I pull my rifle up, get ready, boom, hit the bear and it ran around the corner. And I, I took so little time, like t- I was so excited yeah. that, that like you never, you don't give yourself enough time yeah. to kind of like think through the shot and everything. So I shot and I was like, Oh, I did not take my time on that. Mm. And then I hit the bear, it ran around the corner. So I was kind of stressing. Like, I don't know if I hit it well, hit it good. Yeah. And I get down there and it's like 10 yards from where I shot piled it. Up. Just piled up. <laughs> and it, the shot was about as perfect as you could get. I'm not tooting my own horn, but yeah. it, it, it was happened, a good shot. It, it happened to yeah. be a good shot and the like minimal bear, but I cut that bear up so horribly, like going, <laughs> thinking back of how I skinned it out. Cause I think I tried to get a rug out of it, but oh, okay. the hide ended up being See, like, I'm going to stop you right there. Cause this is the one of the most asked questions we get is, or the most number one concern is that new hunters are scared to be quote unquote successful because they're scared of what happens when you get an animal down. Um, if it's not close to the truck, uh, and I can't drag it to my truck or, like, what do I do? And I, I have multiple friends that I'm, I've started getting into hunting and that's their number one concerns. Like I, I have to like save a pay for YouTube platinum and like save a video uh, to my phone about people like quartering up or something like that. So can you, I don't, I know it's a long time ago, but can you remember like going over those hurdles and how you did it? Or was it just kind of like, maybe you've killed rabbits before or done something that on small game that you kind of just translated or how can you help people that are listening right now that are maybe going on their first bear hunt? And if they do want a rug, how do you, how did you go about doing that? Well, I ended up tossing that hide. So I still don't have a rug. Um, it ended up being kind of late in the season and there was the, the hide wasn't like the best hide, but, um, I remember, so I started hunting two seasons prior to that and I killed a black tailed deer and hung it up. And I honestly probably skinned that pretty horribly too, but mm-hmm. got the job done. And then the 2015, 2015 season, I didn't kill anything, but I knew people that killed stuff that year. So I just like tagged along and at any time something was dead, I was like jumping on the, the, the carcass, like learning one, I had watched a ton of videos on YouTube, figured out like what works, what doesn't work. And then after that, wait, so you killed in 2016, your bull. So yeah, mm-hmm. it was a season prior. And I think someone had killed a, um, a cow elk. I'm trying to think what else I had a, a couple things that I helped skin out sure. and, and, and cut up. So you have seen the process. I seen the process. You learn, you learn from other people. Like I, I luckily had a couple people to show me the ropes, mm-hmm. but going into the bear, doing a bear for a hide is a little bit different of a process than yeah. just skinning an animal and gutting it and everything else. So I think initially I went into it like, Oh, I'm going to cut this bear up and I'm going to do it for a bear hide. Yeah. And you kind of come, come up the belly and, and work the arms out. And I did that, but I didn't think about once I had the hide off of it, I needed to get the meat out. So, mm. so I could have, strategize it better to take off one side, take the meat off, kind of take it from the belly and do kind of a gutless method. Yeah. Which would have worked better to keep the meat clean. But I ended up with like a bear carcass on a stump, like cutting off chunks of meat. And I think it ended up actually like I got a lot of the meat out clean enough to where I like spent enough time to get it burgered up and, yeah. and whatever I ended up doing with it. But no, I mean, just use the resources like yeah for like youtube like like you said i don't know it's just the level of i don't know if some people who are like scared about getting into it haven't experienced it yeah but one having killed a deer i knew that i could do it so that may have taken that apprehensive yeah like state of like i don't know what i'm going to do when i get it down away from me that i was like just ha- happy to be out doing whatever. But, yeah. um, Ooh, this I'm interrupting just cause it, it hit me, uh, this year, the 2021 season, the new reporting mm-hmm. we need to, we need to go over that. Yep. And, and we did mention it in the, the, other in the last one, last but yeah, podcast, now that it's but, out and this is like, this can be a spring bear podcast. We definitely got to mention the new reporting required I, for 21. I did see, send an email out to the game division manager asking the question. I don't think he got back to me on that one yet though. I'll, okay. I'll send a follow up and hopefully get a verification if it's required for fall season or just the spring season. So, gotcha. Cause that's another thing, packing out hides and, and all that other in stuff, September so. and August is pretty gnarly. Yep. And, um, yeah, so 
I would just say if you're apprehensive about it, get out, like reach out to people. I was probably annoying to people. Like, I think I was like talking to the Phelps crew because I was like running that Instagram channel. I was messaging everybody. Can oh, I come yeah. along? Can I tag along? <laughs> Dan ended, ended up letting me tag along to film his stuff. Like, there's, you just have to be, there's ways around it. You just have to be, yeah, active and trying to. I mean, there's so many videos up nowadays. I know. Yeah. And, just starting on anything, go shoot a turkey. Like sure, absolutely. Knock on doors. I, I went out so working for looking to like this season. Mm-hmm. We're thinking about potentially doing like a, a hunt with someone or giving away a hunt. That's still not a, a a set in stone thing, but I was looking for properties, um, kind of in the Whitetail area south of Spokane, because mm-hmm. those that's like a good way to kind of introduce someone who hasn't hunted. And I knocked on three doors and out of those three doors, I got two yeses and a no. So really? it's that easy. If you just pick out a couple properties where you're like, okay, I think like as long as you're courteous and actually get out and do it, like yeah. if you're new to it, that's a great way to kind of like go shoot a doe or, I mean, that season's probably not going to be available to shoot ammo this year unless you draw a tag. But in any case, like even over here for the blacktail, like there's plenty of over the counter blacktail stuff. You just got to go knock on doors, like for antlerless. If you're just trying to get an animal on the ground, mm-hmm. that's a great way to do that. So absolutely, and I think the just to go back to it, would you would you not let? I don't know how to word this, but I think what I'm getting at is a lot of people are are legitimately not hunting because of the this is like their last like speed bump. They're mm-hmm. not, they're not trying to push themselves to be successful because they're, they're nervous of what's going to happen when they are. Mm-hmm. You can't let that stop you. No, you just got to get out and do it. And as long as you have game, enough game bags, mm-hmm. a knife, like a replaceable blade knife. Cause if you go out with a knife that yeah, you don't have a sharp or even yeah. <laughs> something sharp enough, like it's going to be a pain. Like you probably still be able to cut up the animal. Sure. It's just going to be way more difficult and you're probably going to risk cutting yourself more. Yeah. So Speaking getting, of knives, Jacob. We just ordered a new batch of uh, Pian Wild Tamarack knives. We did. So Hopefully. they'll be in here. Yep. And depending on how those go, we we might start doing a more consistent order exactly. of those. So yep. we're talking with Josh and hopefully we can get that more consistent. So yep. if um, you're looking for a new knife for your spring bear season, it's coming in. Yep. It'll be in this month. And if you have face blade knives, get something to sharpen it too. Like yeah, definitely. If like you want to go out every time you have that fixed blade with it, a, with a fresh, yeah, a fresh hone on it. So, definitely. um, but yeah, have, if you have knife game bags in a pack to pack it out, like yep. you can get the name, you can, out. you'll get it done. Is it going to be the most pretty thing you've ever done? Yeah. No, it's just going to take more time. And you and, might miss a couple things the first time, but yeah. you're going to open your eyes to, Oh, this is how you get a back strap out or, Oh, this is where the heart is, that kind of stuff. And yeah. it'll just, you'll put the pieces together when you do get an animal down. And like what Jacob said, teaming up with other people that were successful prior to, um, maybe his own, this was your first like solo backpack type of pack out so hunt that 2015 year. I missed a bull. Yep. In the unit with your bow. Killing, yeah. So if I had killed a bull, you would have been solo, way over your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have been, probably a nightmare and I would have well, figured it out. I would have figured it out. Like yeah. it would have sucked. And I would have, I, I had like a, what pack did I have? The Marine rucksack is what oh, I had. Gosh. I was a surplus Marine ruck, rucksack, which isn't horrible, horrible, but it would have been, you would have been nightmare. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, you just, like, once you get it on the ground, get the hide off of it and then cut meat away until you can't, and until the bones are left. Like that's yeah. basically what you're left. That's with. it. Yeah. yeah. If you really just want to start, if you want to get down to like that cave, Manny, mm-hmm. just start cutting meat off and putting it in sacks and, and visualize it, go on YouTube and watch people cut up stuff. Like yeah. it's to visualize it. Then you get an animal on the ground. Then you cut it up. Just get out and do yeah. it. Like that's, you could that's, probably get the front shoulders off in four seconds. Yeah. It's those rear hams. that are the only thing that are difficult, but if you're trying to rug it on your first time, that's going to be tough. Mm-hmm. Rugging, rugging. If you're trying to get a rug out of a bear, it's pretty tough. Yeah. And it, it's just the, you just have to know that once you get the hide off a certain section, you just, I got the hide off of the carcass and then it was like, oh, now this what? bear meat's rolling around in the dirt. Yes. Like, yeah. It wasn't that horrible because I had it up on a stump that 
I mean, stumps have a little bit of dirt on them. But sure. Just looking like memory, remembering what I was doing to cut up that bear. Just, just laughing at yourself. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. So, <laughs> but that's what you expect your first but time. You I can't also, let that stop you. I also have a picture of all the hindquarters and all the meat laid out on t- on a table, really clean. So mm. I did enough of it right, even though it was really messed up and it was not. Yeah. Anyone who has cut up animals now would have looked at me and been like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. <laughs> I still made it happen. There was still bear meat. I, I ate that bear, all of the meat off of it. Like it was, how is bear meat? It's amazing. Where does it rank in your, your scale? I think it depends on the bear. Cause I've had, okay, let's do it. Let's do a fall berry bear. That's the thing though. I had my 18 bear okay. and my 17 bear. 17 bear was probably the best wild game I've ever had. Wait a second. Did you just say the best wild game you've ever had? Yeah. The, the, Stairmaster bear? I, yeah, Stairmaster bear. I had, I Pepsi challenged that. So I still had bear meat from that year and then I had my buck meat. And then I think I had a, a, a all backstrap. So I did bear backstrap, deer backstrap, elk backstrap. Whoa. And I Pepsi challenged it with my roommates and they all liked the bear, that bear too. No way. Yeah. It beat out the deer and, and I was elk. cooking it, like cooking the shit out of it. Because yeah, you have to with trick. You have to. Well, see, that's the thing. So trick. I did more research on trick to be safe. Yes. Cook it to 160. Yeah. But You're, it dies at 138 or something, right? 137. Most strains, 137. But the thing is you, if you're cooking it, if you can sous vide it. So if people know what sous vide yeah. is, it's the water bath yep. back seal it. If you can get it to like 145, 140, which is like a little bit above medium mm-hmm. and you let it sit there for hour, like, and just, cause it's not going to overcook it in a sous vide. If you do that and then reverse sear it, you're going to have a medium bear steak that you should be feel pretty safe. And not all trichinosis strains die in the freezer, but some of them do. Really? So if you freeze it for 30 days. Oh, wow. Some of the trick dies. Some okay. of the strains of trick die, trick die. Not all of them, I think, is what I looked up on the internet. Mm-hmm. So between freezing for 30 days and doing a sous vide bath, you could get away with like a medium cooked bear. Mm-hmm. But you'd still be taking a risk. So Sure. All in all, cook it to 160. Cook it to 160. Because we don't want these people blaming it on us. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, also, so then my 2018 bear. So this bear, the th- I don't know if it because my 2017 bear sat on ice for a day and had a chance to rest. My 2018 bear, I killed it like seven and a half miles into the wilderness, uh, way deep, solo. And then it only got to like 60 degrees that night. Had it hung up all night, but it just wasn't cold enough to like get the temperature of the meat down. Yeah. So I actually had to call my roommates. I'm like, I got to get this bear meat out or it's going to go bad. So they came and helped me pack out the whole thing, seven and a half miles. And then I got it, was processing it the next night. So 24 hours later and the fat was going. So the fat was starting to stink. But once I got the fat off of it, the, the bear meat itself smelled fine. So... But then I freeze it. So after it only had 24 hours to kind of hang and then I threw it straight into the freezer Mm -hmm. and I, the flavor was fine, but it was just a little bit tougher. Yeah. So, and it also wasn't as fat. So that bear didn't have as much fat on it as my 17. Was it a boar? It was a boar. Um, and for whatever reason that bear, if I Pepsi challenged it with other things, I probably would have ranked it a little bit lower. Okay. Overall still good. It was just a little bit on the chewy side. So I used it for more conducive recipes that sure burger or I'm with you cooking longer. Bobby, but, we killed a, we killed a bear in 2018, Bobby's spring bear tag. And we killed one. Um, and then that night I kind of did like my typical fat boy shit, uh, fried up bacon and then pan fried the bear meat in bacon grease with butter. And then that was it. Like, so season them bacon grease, a little bit of butter, let them like get to that, cook the shit out of them. Mm-hmm. And we ate it and the flavor was a 10. Yeah. But the shit. toughness was uh, like, it was horrible. Mm-hmm. It was like beef jerky. Mm-hmm. You know, you like to rip it and shit. Not so, but that bear was also, it was a sow and she didn't have a ton of fat on her being springtime. Didn't mm-hmm. have a ton of fat. But do you think that has something to do with it? Like the amount of fat you are, the more chewy you are, like a, a boar versus sow. Have you had, you have any input on that? I think so. I mean, not knowing, I'm not an expert in, in meat science, but mm-hmm. I think the more fat you have on an animal, the more tender and and flavorful it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and juicy, I guess the more 
mm. liquid kind of yeah. juiciness it's going to retain when you cook it. Because if it's completely like if you take a deer steak and take Just all the fat off shit. of it, yeah. and then don't put any oil on it and cook the shit out of it, it's going to be like eating a a sock. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be dry. Yeah, but if it, there's fat inside the muscle, then sure. it's going to be a little bit more juicy, and that fat's going to be a little bit oilier when yeah. you're when you're eating it. So that's I think. For my 2017 bear, you could cook it, and it was just so fatty and well, he, good. Your like, 17 bear was very large, mm-hmm. very fatty. Mm-hmm. Um, he was boar, and he was very old. Maybe not very old, but he was just big, big bear. And he was eating berries and fat. Like there was a yeah. thick layer of fat. Do on you remember him. open up his stomach contents? Yeah, and just, it was just like berries, berries, 100. Yeah. percent Yep, that's all it was. And those berries were sweet too. They were like berry. on the way out. So, yep. um, and it was kind of. Labor Day weekend, so it's they he had a chance to fatten up. Oh yeah. Um, so that there's something to be said with that. And then I think if you can get access to someone that has a cooler for bear meat, mm, hang I it. Think if you could hang it for Do you I think net, that played a role? Well, that's the thing, like the twenty four hours and then into the freezer versus it that <laughs> black bear that I killed in seventeen had two full days, one of the days Coolers. being in a cooler. Yep. And being cooled down and just letting that meat relax before I cut it up and put it into into the freezer that could have been something too i you never know it's like they're yeah. so specific but we yeah, this is also a good plug for a decent cooler yeah because you lost some meat i did and it was yeah cheap cooler and it was sitting in this for some reason the cooler had been put in the sun when we were hunting the next day so it luckily it was just the flank yeah which isn't a very very usable piece of meat it's not mm-hmm. something that you're even required to take but i i'm a bone picker so i yes, take you every are. Well, and this, this goes, uh, we, we kind of were trying to figure out how we ended up losing meat because we did everything right, except for at camp, like base camp, we had the cooler sitting in the sun or was it in the back of a truck? I can't remember. It was in the back of the truck in the sun. Okay. And I don't think the tonneau was down or whatever, but the, the thing we did wrong also on that is we got a big chunk of like a big ice block Block and then put the meat next to it. So anything on the bottom was fine. Yep. But heat rises, yep. so if the ice is on the bottom, yep. then the heat's going to be, it can be very warm at the top of the cooler and, and cool at a good temperature in the bottom of the cooler. So for with that sitting in the sun, it was heating up the top, the bottom was cool, and yep. that flank was just laid over the top with no ice on top of it, yep. and that just went bad. It went bad. And everything else besides that was totally fine. Yep, um, just that very top layer. And I do believe the cheaper cooler, like we couldn't get the lid like latched and closed mm-hmm. really good because yep. there was so much meat in it. Yep. That thing was huge. Exactly. And so, yeah, if you get a good cooler, one, you could you could even get um, dry ice and, and yep. have a more consistent cooling with dry ice. Yep. And if you're using normal ice figuring out a way to like maybe put uh, newspaper or something over the top of the meat and then just throwing all of the meat on top of or all of the ice on top of the meat so the ice is up on top so when the hot air in that cooler Circulating. circulates it, it cools up at the top and then cools down in the bottom so yeah. um it's just learning lessons but definitely luckily i didn't lose it was just one flank i think that i lost and i was but we were still disappointed because it was our mistake and and we didn't take care of it yeah but that day i killed a deer so we were still excited Mm -hmm. (laughs) but we were upset i came back and i thought the whole thing had gone so i like opened the cooler i was pissed like oh yeah and then i pulled it out and i was like sniffing everything and then i got down to the rest of the meat it was like it was just that one piece yeah which also i was kind of bummed out about because the fat goes faster than the the meat does and there was Um, a ton of renderable fat on that flank. Yeah. And I wanted to render it down and make bear oil out of it. So yeah. I ended up not doing that because I just didn't know if the fat had gone in the time that it was in the cooler. But if you have access to a dry aging cooler, if you could do that with bears, I think it would be like amazing. If you could let it rest for like a week. Oh yeah. Like maybe take the fat off day three or like first day and render it and then hang the rest of the, the rest of the meat for like a week. Cause that's what I've been doing with my white tails as of recently. Cause it's, it's easier to do. And that late season in November, I can just throw it in my, um, in my garage and let it hang. Mm. Like with my white tail this year, it was like a two and a half year old white tail. And I hung it for 10 days. Oh my gosh. It's, was it's, it fantastic? It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh wow. So that's what I did with, I mean, we would do it basically all this year. Cause we have access to a walk-in cooler with Dave and I've, I've hung like my antelope, you know, he was hanging for, seven days at least, but we, we need to try it with bears this year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Dude, just when, and for me, anything that I'm going to burger, 
it's just burger right, right away because yeah. you don't want to have to cut away meat that you're just going to burger. That you're going to burger. That's so a that, good point. That, that's a good tip. That you just lose it more if you yeah, just let it sit. If you just let it sit. So yeah. the ba- even the back straps, like one no, or two I days, because you peel that little layer away and you're like, that's perfectly good. If you yep. hang it for seven, 10 days, it turns into you do. A you get a huge, big, thick centimeter exactly. of meat that you're cutting away. And you're like cringing because you're yeah. cutting away back strap. And, and it's almost not necessary. Pile. As long as you let it chill out for like, yeah. And actually a thing I did with my back strap is I took wax paper and okay. I put it. So I had a clean plastic kind of foldable table in my garage and the back straps, I laid them out on the table so they could stay cool. Mm. And then I put wax paper over, over the top. So it's still cool enough that it's like settling down. The meat's kind of going through that aging process, but that layer of, uh, that dries out when it's free hanging didn't happen because it was on both sides, it was uh, oh, okay. It was blocked from from air. So I got you. That's the way to do it too. And I think I got two two to four days of aging on the back strap, which is plenty because it's a back strap. So gotcha. Yeah, and then I mean, we we bear meat's awesome. That's the yeah. That's, that's kind of the consensus yeah. that we you we always hear at least like when we start posting pictures of of dead bears and stuff on our pages. It's like why you don't eat bears, and it's like there's just that very false like rumor that's, going on with bears is that they're not good. They're like greasy and oily and which, gamey. And that's the worst argument to me. Cause like is. who goes and buys a burger and they're like, this is so dry. It's delicious. Oh yeah. <laughs> like there's no fat in this. It's delicious. Like, that's a good one. like if you went to a restaurant and you got a burger that was like a brick, you'd be like, this is terrible. This is but, awful. But you get a greasy, oily burger. Yeah. That's what tastes good. And yes. so if you burger bear meat and it has 20% fat and you throw yeah. on the grill and it just starts dripping and like, Oh yeah. That's what people that's like. Good meat. That's yeah, good meat. That's good meat. Exactly. So that's the worst argument I hear. It's oily. Yeah. And the, the bear fat tastes great if you take care of it. So. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we, uh, on your bear in 17, when we got back to camp, we just like rendered down bear fat and we were just throwing back straps in. And then at the end, we're I've like, we're just eating the chunks of fat that yeah. done because it's, it's tasty. It's good. Yeah. So, I mean, in my 2019 bear, uh, or not, it wasn't mine. I took my roommate in and he shot one. It had enough bear fat that we could render. It wasn't like super fatty, but we got back to camp and I did this weird recipe because it was like 12 o'clock at night because we had packed down this super steep face, got back to camp, rendered some bear fat down. And then I rendered the oil, cooked the meat, the the bear meat in the oil, Mm -hmm. set the meat aside. And then I put the oil into a pan. I have this buddy, JP, he it was his first time backpacking into the back country. (laughs) This fool. had So it was like a Bimart pack frame with just like a army duffel bag, like strapped to the, nice. to the pack frame. And he yeah. brought like a pot, like a full size pot <laughs> in. So I was chastising him at the trailhead. Like you're, you're crazy. You're crazy, man. man. And then, but when I was back there, I'm like, I'm gonna use that pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being crazy, yeah. man. <laughs> so I, uh, boiled up some ramen noodles, strained Ooh. the noodles and then took the bear fat and then stir fried the noodles with the bear fat and the Stop seasoning. It. And then I put the bear meat in with the noodles and made like a stir fry. And it, it was, it was good. Whoa. That's the next level, man. That's like a, a gourmet back. Yeah, country. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Better to mountain house. Yeah. It was pretty good. So yeah, no, you can with, with bear fat and rendering it's, it's just, it just turns into oil at that point. Yeah. And it's really good. So yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're mouthwatering over here about bear meat. So definitely don't be shy to hunt bears because you're scared of the, the way their meat tastes. It's fantastic. Um, while we're here on what well, we just mentioned it, let's go over the, um, the new regulation that was implemented in 2020, but got put on delay. Uh, let's just read the, uh, reporting if you have it pulled up. Sure. So we're back to the screen here. Uh, Jacob's on the Washington, um, WDFW page. You can just pull this up very easily. And then he's going to go over to the table of contents. And then we're going to find the new spring f- bear reporting guidelines. So give us a second here while he pulls it up. Hunters are required to report hunting activity for each special permit awarded in addition to their general season hunting activity report. All successful bear hunters must validate, notch their bear tag, notify the department within 72 hours of kill, excluding legal state holidays by calling... 844-992-7266 to provide the hunter's name, date, and GMU of kill and the sex of the animal. The raw pelt with evidence of sex and school must be presented to an authorized department employee within five days of kill. All permit hunters must comply with harvest reporting and submission of biological samples. Failure to comply with the submission of biological samples is a misdemeanor pursuant to RCW 77 
15th to 18th. Okay. So we reached out and asked what uh, pelt. Yeah. How much of the how pelt. much of the pelt is required? So uh, if you guys are paying attention there, uh, it did say a raw pelt sample um, and then the entire skull. It so says the raw pelt, which you would assume is the full raw the pelt, full raw pelt. But we want clarification because if you're in the back country, if you could just exactly. leave the hide on the skull, like just take that's the head a good off point. Yep, and have enough hide there. Yeah, then that would hopefully satisfy that, and you wouldn't have to pack sixty pounds of hide. One hundred percent, man. So that is, and it says this is the spring season. So since it's not in the fall, the updated twenty twenty one regulation booklet, which isn't out yet. If it's in that as well for the fall season, then we're really going to try to clarify that for people hunting. Definitely, man. Because stuff, like so. Jacob just said, like well, well, your your bear seventeen that had to have been sixty five pounds. Oh yeah, it was a lot. With if not more, yeah, my pack was heavy on the pack out because I had a hind quarter, some gear, and that a hide, full head and hide and head and hide, and it, I I think my pack was pushing ninety. Oh, hundred percent, man. So and we had a long whew, long yeah. down. I remember <laughs> on the little bit of up that there was, my legs started like. I think I had my, my waist belt like yeah. strapped too tight and it was sagging a little bit. So yeah. it's cutting off circulation. Of my oh, ass. I bet. This is <laughs> one of the like, most iconic pin wild pictures is that uh, you have a, a coyote color tan, um, XO pack and then your giant black phased bear on your head. Out, yeah. So definitely an iconic picture. I'm sure you guys have been following the channel. Oh, it's actually a, a video on our YouTube. Yeah. That's, so yeah, check that's that out. There. If you guys want to see that. Anyway. So back to spring bear, Washington, if you drew have fun, yeah. Um, congratulations there, on your is, draw. Yeah. Is there any tactics? Um, Oh man, I think, uh, well we know, um, actually have you been in the, have you been down in the blues, uh, during spring? Not during the spring season. No. So what I learned, if you're, if you're one of the lucky ones that drew one of those, uh, um, blues mountain tags, uh, when uh, to cannon Dayton, Lake Creek, mountain view, any of those, um, Rod. The, yeah, the Rond. Uh, actually, the Rond might be a little bit more accessible earlier. Yeah, uh, I know in 2019, uh, cats out of the bag. Now I had Winaha, and I went down there three different times. Actually, shot a bear and never recovered him. Um, but the first trip, April, uh, we went to end of April. I think it was like April 25th, and we couldn't get up. We couldn't get on some of the main was, roads. Getting back into the yeah, 19. Yeah, that was a super late snow year too. It was uh it was very very rough. I'm not sure. This year is very mild, right? You just were had eyes on country. So at the top of that Wenaha range, there's I think there's a lot of snow up high. Definitely. But I think down in the Rond in that lower country, yeah. I think it's all pretty melted off. Okay. Um I was in the Yakima area and lower elevation doesn't have very much snow, but I'm pretty sure the snowpack if you go on like the the and like the federal sure. snow like no snow water yeah the no yeah. snow water equivalent we're at like 150 to 250 percent snowpack for the year at the top ranges at top the, ranges so cascades. winter range didn't get hammered but the top ranges did absolutely okay so, which is good for our mule deer yeah mule deer elk it, they Definitely. should be fine there's not going to be a low like a high winter kill because the snow didn't Hit drive them all the way to exactly. the end of the winter range yeah, yeah. but it should be Hopefully there's enough, like there should be good water for the year. Definitely. Irrigation, all that should be fine. So yeah. it's kind of a good in between. Absolutely. Shed yeah. hunting. Eh, yeah, it's going to be rough. Bulls it'll be, be, it'll be spread out. Um, Oak Creek's not going to be very good this year. So. Yeah, definitely. Stay away from Oak Creek this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Saturday this year, man. Uh, well, it's going to be busy. Get out and, and have fun. Take the kids out, but definitely. don't expect to load your pack with sheds. Yeah, yeah. So. It's uh, May 1st is a Saturday. And if you guys are questioning that, uh, they open up the wildlife areas that are close to winter range. So like the Oak Creek, uh, the Weenus. Yep. Um, um I, I forget the one in Ellensburg. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a handful of wildlife units that yeah. are closed for winter range and they open them up. So Joe Watt. Is it the Joe Joe Canyon? Yep, yeah. That's it. Um, so they open those up at May 1st. So you guys can go in there and shed hunt. They close those down so, because they just want to give the elk uh, time to just relax. Mm -hmm. They're not being pressured. People aren't running around with dogs and looking for sheds right when they drop. Just kind of, they're in a very um, fragile state mm -hmm. in the, in this time of year because they're recovering from a long rut and a long winter. So uh, we're definitely not recommending people getting out there and, and pushing those people or those elk around uh, prior to that May 1st, but get out and enjoy the public lands. Um, but yeah, May 1st, they open up all those areas. You guys can jump in in there and start looking for sheds it's a lot of a lot of fun with the family 
Um, but back to the spring bear tips and tactics. Um, I drew the blues in 2019 and April, we could not access any of the roads into my unit. We had to go into a, like a neighboring unit road and then kind of hike into, um, Winaha, which was a lot of fun. And it's a very, very unpredictable, brutal country. The pictures that we're posting right now on our Instagram, that was from that tag just the last couple of days. And it was snowing sideways in, in April and very, very cold. Um, it was, it was fun, but we, we went down there and learned some road systems, got eyes on the country, kind of got an idea of what we were in for. Um, I've always wanted to go down there and hunt the blues. Now I basically hunted every corner of Washington state. Um, it's but then cool I came back and yeah, absolutely. I came back in Memorial weekend and hunted for three days and, and saw tons of bears. It's just very, very tricky country. And, and in the blues, it's, uh, you can see them, but getting to them is, uh, a couple hours. It's yeah. very steep and, and very big country. Um, I would recommend, um, I made the mistake and, and just didn't give myself any vacation time. I didn't think I was going to need it. Um, and you just need more time to, especially that big country. It's all wilderness. So there's no mm-hmm. road systems. I would say, give yourself a, a solid week down there. Uh, one of my buddies, Micah drew, um, one of the blues uh, units down there. And I just recommended him just like, man, give yourself a week. You have a great hunt. It's um, just a good time to be out. Too. Exactly. It's a great time to be out. You can shed hunt the blues. Uh, so you kind of wrap that into shed hunting and, uh, spring bear hunting. I don't know. We never saw any turkeys on the, on the other side of the one. Uh, huh. But I would imagine maybe there's some turkeys. I've, in I've ran into some turkeys in, around that country in the lower, yeah. the lower areas. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, like, if you got the grand Ron tag, it's going to be open earlier. It's, those grasses are going to be sprouting earlier and yep. the bears. Could, I've seen a bear down there. Oh, um, and, and the, the grand Ron tag we, we just mentioned, or is that mountain view where the four Oh ranches, four Oh ranches, mountain view. Okay. Yeah. Any of that lower country, basically just try to find the snow line and, and walk it up. Cause as the snow melts and that green grass pops up, that's where the bears are going to be. So, yeah. but if you have one aha or, or to cannon to can like anywhere where the wilderness mountain view even has a section of wilderness. Yep. That country is tough. Like if you haven't been there, be prepared definitely for rugged, True. nasty country. Yeah. So, um, but it's, it's rugged and nasty, but it's also amazing. So yeah, with that, I have a funny memory and I got to throw my buddy under the bus. Um, he's not a hunter, just kind of got him into hunting. Uh, never done anything like that. And he wanted to tag along with me and Pat down to the blues. So we took him and then he, it, we, it was like a very mild weekend. It was like the snowy weekend. So we didn't really drop in. We were kind of just covering country and glassing into one. Uh-huh. We were in on one of the boundary lines. And then the second time I went back with, uh, Tony and that's what actually when I shot a bear. Um, and man, we can talk about that. That was brutal. Um, but we were coming out of one of those nasty canyons that the blues have and, and we get to the top and I look behind me and, and John is crawling on his hands and knees and he's coming up out and he gets to the top and he's like on fours and he's like a dog. He just rolls over and he goes, this is some brutal shit. <laughs> just, just not used to it. And if you're yeah. not used to it with, especially with, you know, camp weight on, it's nasty, man. It's a big get, country. Get on the Stairmaster. Oh, exactly. Dude. A hundred percent. That country is Run some of the stairs. most beautiful countries country in the state. Um, Washington is so diverse from the blues down there into the North Cascades where we hunt and then to Jacob's whitetail country. And then, you know, the, the, where you killed your bull over here on the West side, just Washington is very diverse. And that's one Mm -hmm. of the, one of the areas of Washington state I recommend everybody to take a look at, but if you're one of those lucky, one of those lucky blues hunters, congratulations. Um, yeah. Get high in glass. Yeah, high, Take high a lot. chance for yeah. uh, color phase. There's a lot of color phase. Yes. There, tons. So. Lots of color phase. I don't think I saw a single black one. Mm-hmm. And in the time we done, and we probably saw, I don't know, 15 ish bears. Yeah. Um, lots of, uh, the one I actually shot was like, I don't even know what you call it. It's like, um, uh, orange, you know, it's like in between, cinnamon. uh, cinnamon and chocolate where it's like, uh, like yeah. orange, like yeah. it, very cool color. Um, yep. but yeah, awesome. Awesome sure. country down there. Uh, the West side stuff like Skagit and, and all those, what do you have? Do you have any information? I don't, I've never hunted them for spring. I know a couple of, uh, one of my buddies, Tori McGregor actually shot a book bear out of, uh, the Skagit area and he was just a, a log and road guy, you yep. know? That's, I mean, um, that's what I would, I recommend never hunted it yeah. but from the people that I know that spend time out there and I yep. know a kid that's on the coast and he, he was putting a video up of last spring when he was looking for like black tail sheds sure. and Roosevelt sheds. Bears in the road. I think, I think he saw five bears in one clear cut. Oh my gosh. Yep. So if you're in the right area, yeah. hopefully the bears are that thick, but that, that just goes to show why we need more spring seasons Absolutely, on the man. West side. Um, 
but yeah, it's clear cuts, predator calling. Um, okay. I mean, I used my predator call yeah. on my first bear. It came out of the brush and was like looking around for whatever that whatever was. That and was. What time? Of, what time of year was that? You say it was May. Um. It yeah, May. Like okay. end of May, I think. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, that that's kind of one of the tactics that you always hear is, uh, oh, it's only good in April when they're first coming out. Well, and, no, because. I think they drop more May and May for whitetails. Oh, you're doing fauna distress. Fauna distress. Oh, yeah. That's definitely, you know, May and June. But, yeah. you know, April, more susceptible to like hair or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. And even then, it may get their attention and pull them out. I would throw it in your pocket just to like, if you have a bear, go take a nap. Yeah. Pull it out and see if they just walk out and like, look at you. Sure. Because yeah. that's that's something that they might do as well. Yeah. So Did, uh, I can't remember now, but I think uh, the Brian call in the in the Lampers, when that bear was sleeping, did they rip on a whistle or did they just wait for him remember. to get up? I'm not sure. I can't remember. I know Ryan is a fan of that. Just mm-hmm. try to get him to stop anything. Yeah. Like I know that one last year, oh, uh, yeah, they were yeah, like yeah. running away mm-hmm. and he was ripping on it, trying to get him to turn around. Yeah. And he never And did. there was one bear coming in from behind right him. up behind yeah. him. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a tactic. Is there to get him to stop, get him to turn, uh, maybe get him to stand up if you're watching him lay down or whatever. Yeah. Um, Phelps, yeah. Phelps has a, uh, fond of stress, doesn't he have a, he's a predator call. Is it more he, rabbit or I don't know. Pull it up. Let's see. Uh, I sure think, uh, I, I think, I think he does, but I'm not maybe positive. They're, they're coming out. Yeah. Maybe they're, um, uh, unreleased, but, uh, yeah, ho- again, hope you guys are watching this on the, the YouTube channels this is something new. This is the first time we're doing this. Look at that new background. Oh, Congratulations, see, Jason. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, Steve and Yanni. Oh boy. The, wow. Um, here, let's go. And while you're out there, they have new turkey calls. So. They do. That's right around the corner, man. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to get all Cy out on the podcast. If you draw a Northeastern unit, for sure Predator. throw a turkey tag in your pocket. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the first time I heard turkeys go crazy, too. Was yeah, out he does. Hunting. A fawn and jacked close read distress call. There you go. There you go. Eighteen ninety nine. Perfect. Go there pick up go. one of those. So Phelps just got you covered across the board nowadays. Yeah. I love him. They did, they did just, uh, I did uh, the Meat Eater X uh, Phelps. They just released a whole new turkey line, right? They have box call, the slate call, um, the, all the diaphragms. Um, so yeah, like you said, that's definitely true. Last year, um, we were sitting at camp frying up. Uh, my wife drew last year. She was uh, seven months pregnant. So uh, if you guys don't have seen those videos, we saw like 13 bears in two days. Uh, awesome, awesome hunt. Uh Anyways, we were back at camp making lunch, and there was a uh, yeah. right below camp. And so I called him in with my mouth, and my sister was actually there, and she had like run to her Jeep, grab the shotgun, and I have this thing like it is at camp. And I just like peek over the – like we're camped on like a bluff, and I peek down uh, from the bluff, and he's standing there at like 30 yards. And I can just you see his, his red – I know, shouldn't, I shouldn't have came over because as soon as she came over, like I got away with it because I was like – coming over oh, slow you did? and i was like he must have been really interesting and i was like ar, 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 ar. just in my yeah. mouth just like that and he was just coming over and i come over and he does he sees me doesn't do anything and then like one of his hands starts moving so he starts following the hand bonnie comes over with the shotgun and he just <laughs> gone <laughs> but we should have just stood at top of that bluff and let him come up and over because he was coming yep um, but yeah definitely keep a, a turkey tag in your pocket if you're drawing any of those northeastern uh units i'm sure um, some other units have them yeah, like down sure the blues, the, the blues, there's, there's turkeys down there too. I think it's even a different Turkey. Um, I oh, forget which species it is down yeah. there, but, um, anyway, yeah, they're, they're around. So throw one in and if yep. you, it might just be something while the bears, cause I think bear activity, they're not as in the, in the fall. I've seen them sit in a berry field 24 seven. Oh, hundred percent. Mash and berries, yep. but they're just cruising. So, so what goes, else happens during the spring season that gets bears moving? The rut. The rut. Um, last year, or in 2019, when I had my tag, I literally watched a gigant, gigantosaurus boar uh, come over the top of a ridge and stay on this ridge for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And he covered about 2,000 yards in that 20 minutes and just kind of went out of our life. But we were trying to get a play on it super fast and, and try to figure out how to cut him off, and we just couldn't do it. He just would not stop moving. Um, they are covering tons of ground in June. Um, I think it's like June. I would say peak of the rut, June 15th when the season closed. I just looked it up. Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, bear honey magazine. There you go. Shout out to, uh, uh Clay Newcomb. Clay Newcomb. Um, it says May 21st, to July 4th. Yeah. May 10th, May 21st. 
Sorry, I'm trying to read through this stuff here. Very good. It says the bear rut is about a 50 to 54 day cycle. So that's actually a pretty wide range, starting in mid May and running. Uh, running through early June. Most of the time, the male and female bears were in each other's presence from two to five day intervals. Um, Receptive pe- female. Breeding period was between June 11th and June 30th. There you go. So that's our season ends June 15th in Washington. Yep. Um, right here. So, and actually got extended last year, didn't it? Because yeah, it did COVID. June 30th because that of COVID. Good. Um, but yeah, if you hit that, basically... Labor Day or Memorial Day weekend mm-hmm. and on. Yep. I think is that's when I've noticed more activity. Exactly. And that's kind of our uh, point of aim as like when we were putting together these hunts is like Memorial Day. That's why I went to the blues for a long Memorial Day in 19. Uh, Bobby killed the weekend before Memorial just because we're getting over there. We knew the area quite a bit. We knew like I've seen bears out prior to. Um, and then Memorial Day is also just a very heavy you know, camping vacation weekend. So you're going to have lots of activity, quads and motorbikes and other people are going to be out there utilizing the the public land. So that's one downfall. But in the wilderness in 19, when I was in one, I was like, I knew I wasn't going to be dealing with, you know, mm-hmm. campers and motor homes and, and, you know, people riding dirt bikes and shit. Cause it's all wilderness. So if you do have a unit that is not one of the wilderness units, just be prepared for that. If you are going out for Memorial weekend, lots of recreation, um, shed hunters, all that kind of stuff. People are out there using the public land these days. Yeah. And there's something to be said about bears kind of being solitary creatures. I feel like most of the bears I find are in areas where they just don't get messed with. Yeah. Like it's kind of just a quiet area, maybe less motorized access if none. Um, So just try to find areas where they're not going to have to deal with that stuff. Mm. One, I mean, food sources are everywhere in the springtime. So find the greenest green you can find and some somewhere solitary. And that's usually going to hold bears. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it's just another thing that there's quads and dirt bikes ripping by all, all Mm -hmm. along an area where you're hunting. I'm not saying there's not bears there, but probably likely there's less bears because they just don't want to deal with that stuff. So, exactly. Um, yeah. but yeah, good yeah. luck. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to go through any, any of these other units and, and with, uh, any of the dates vary, are they, uh, is it statewide April 15th now? Statewide is what it looks like. Yeah. April 15th. I June swore 15th. some of them opened on the first, maybe they, it's changed. It changed. I think, okay. I think it, they, for solidarity, they changed it to the 15th. So I like it. Um, but yeah, and then also early se- early season, if you're in an area where yeah. there is snowpack, yeah. just find where there is food. Because right at the snow line where it just melted off, it's going to be a couple weeks till that's really greening yeah. up and, and producing food that the bears want to eat. So, for example, in if you were to have drawn a blues tag, start down at the river level. Yeah. Because... It's on the bottom border, right? The, the river kind of touches. Exactly. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bottom. Wanaha Wanaha has it. Like it yeah. goes all the way through. Yeah. So if you're down at the river on yeah, or April creeks 15th, or just anything, yeah. yeah. You want to find that those southern exposures where there's feed and work up with the best feed rather yeah. than starting high and coming down. I would start low and go up. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah. I, I'm really wanting to get out and hunt some spring bear now. I know, I <laughs> do. Um, well, we can transition. That was about an hour on Washington and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, just a 30,000 foot view. If you are successful this year, make sure you you do reach out within your 72 hours and verify that your kill. Uh, you have five days after your harvest to report, uh, not report, but to bring in your pelt and your tooth. Mm, and the skull. Uh, and the skull. Um, I think that is it. Oh, and the north... Eastern units, make sure you do the grizzly bear, black bear identification course. I good think call. you're required to do that. So yep, good call. Um, but moving on, where yeah, are we going to go hunting this I year? Think, well, we were still right before we hit record. We were like, well, what about this? So our, we've narrowed it down to two. Um, Montana and Idaho both offer a non-resident over-the-counter option. Uh, so if you guys are really hankering to get out and hunt spring bears like Jacob and I are and, and Bobby... Um, do some research. There's a couple different uh, programs out there that you can look into or just go visit their, um, what do you call it? They're just with their fish and game website. Yep. And, uh, and see if they offer a non-resident, uh, and Montana and Idaho both do, and they are very similar price. And Jacob's going to go over these right now. And that's like, uh, I know that's uh priority number one. Uh, if one of them is a thousand dollars and one of them's 200, then 
you know, most, most uh, people are going to choose the $200, but Jacob, take it away and please uh, pull this up on the YouTube and you can see how we are doing this. So you guys can build these skills going forward. So Jacob is on Montana and mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, Jake. If you just go ahead and Google Montana FWP, um, I went to their website and then went under hunt, hunt by species, black bear, and then it has 2021 black bear regulations. Download that PDF and it'll bring you to this page here. And let's go look at some, they have right off the bat license chart, um, non-resident. If you're a non-resident, if you're a resident, have a, have a good time. Zoom that in so they can screen. I, 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 oh, there you go. That's too far. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, non-resident 15 base hunting license, which is actually not a whole lot. So fit for a lot of license comparisons, 15 bucks for the base hunting. Uh, you have to pay a conservation, um, license as well. And that's $10 for non-resident. And then the actual tag itself for black bear is $350. So total that's putting you at three seventy five. Yep. Um, my mental math isn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm here for, bud. Yeah. So for <laughs> Jeff, like, I don't know. He's just really good at like putting numbers together for some reason. Um, so uh, where'd you go to school again? I went to Murraysville. Yeah, we're we were always clowning on Marysville's <laughs> education system, but they did pretty good with mental math. So. Um, I'm one of them, them rare super geniuses that come out of there. <laughs> okay, you're getting too far. Okay. okay, once you scroll down, it gives you some some uh, information on like maps. Oh, what are the units. dates? Do we do we that's have a date? That's what I'm getting down to. Okay. So it says Black Bear Management Unit Regulations, and then it goes by unit. Um, looks like all of them are April 15th to June 15th. Oh, no, there's April to yeah. May 31st. Yeah. So be careful there. There's a couple 31st of May and then uh, there's some 15 Junes on here too. So and it has it by region, but there is differences within regions as well. So, um, yeah, you're getting, and then also taking account if you buy a bear, a spring bear season, spring bear tag, you oh. also have a fall tag as well. Oh, is that true for Idaho as well? I don't know. Okay. Well, we will cover that, but uh, that is cool. So if you're not successful in the spring season, you could, you could shoot over there and, um, snag one in the fall. Absolutely. That is cool. Okay. So is there any weapons stip stipulations? Um, or is it, excuse me, Hunter access, I just weapons saw restriction sex. areas. Um, weapon restrictions are in effect in some hunting districts. Such restrictions are stated in the license permit description and, or with a specific date range. The following equipment restrictions apply to weapon restriction areas, archery, crossbow, muzzleloader, traditional handguns. I think that's usually in areas where like there's more people around. Yeah. Um, so honestly, you're probably not going to have to deal with that if you're out in federal managed lands and stuff. Gotcha. Um, but they have a, a list of all of those areas. Um, yeah, that's basically... Again, also, if you're in the northwest and southwest Montana, there's grizzlies. Uh, yeah. So make sure you're carrying bear spray and know what the difference between a... Usually, it's just the hump for me. Like, yeah. if, it's, if it's giant and it has a hump. And um, for tracks, uh, the distance between the claws and the paws and the pads. Yeah, that's and claws, big, man. That's and then, huge. Yeah, there's different different ways to identify different tracks and stuff. But um, I've been in North Idaho and found grizzly tracks. So they are there. Absolutely. Yeah, um, the cabinets have them and then kind of down along the Idaho, kind of where the Idaho, Wyoming and that Wyoming country yeah, and Montana all meet. There's, there's definitely brown bears down, or grizzly bears down there. So, oh, look at this. Yep. So a straight line, uh, between the toes and the, the back pad for grizzly bears. And then it curves for a black bear and then the claws, yeah. the distance between the tracks and the claw marks. So it's like. Two, well, the claws are two to four inches long, but you can see this distance between the toe pads and the claw mark versus a black bear. They're like almost oh. right on top of them. Gotcha. So that curve, flat, and then obviously the size of the tracks. Is, I've seen big black bear, but you can usually tell with that curve and the, the distance between the claws. So anything else on Montana? No, man, I don't think so. I um, mean, it's a, it's a great option, especially if you're already uh, putting in for Montana and you're already going to have a license. 350, yeah. I mean, it's... It's not like super cheap, but it's, you're getting out bear hunting. So. Exactly. It's doable. And uh, I think any of us would pay the 350 to go hunt bears for Absolutely. a couple of weeks. So yeah, Montana is a, a great option. There's a, a, a couple of cool films that, uh, I don't actually know if they want us to say, Never mind. We'll just move on. Yeah. Uh, going to a different one is, uh, Idaho. Um, I think we're done with Montana, correct? Yes, we are. So also, um, same thing. So I just looked up Idaho fishing game. 
that brought me to their main page. I went hunting uh, regulations and then I just control F April actually. So it brought me to, that brought me right to the spring season. So it actually has fall and spring. So I'm guessing here, let's, let's go back over prices if we can. Yeah. Make well, sure we, um, okay. Yeah. I have them up somewhere or I don't, we can probably find them. It's all right. Um, give me just a second here. Okay. I'll just uh, throw a big plug in here to head over to our, our store. Oh, dude, we got some new stuff coming, Jacob. It's coming. It's not in yet. No, nope. it's coming. We got uh, we got the new, f- not new, but we actually we do. We d- redesigned the 48, uh, 48 ounce now jeans. A couple different color configurations are on their way. And then, of course, um, the knife, like we alluded to earlier in the episode, uh, the knives are coming back in stock. We did a, a smaller run of those just to kind of test the waters with them again, with being the, uh, the off season coming in here to spring bear. So if you guys need a new knife for that, they'll be at the end of March in the March, as well as the 48 ounce nail jeans. And then, uh, hats are also being restocked and reloaded. So head over to the store and, uh, pick up something cool for your next hunt. Um, no, that's with, uh, okay. I, I brought it up here. So Sorry. this is updated. It's not within the pamphlet since that's the 2019, 2020. It, oh, okay. it has, doesn't have the updated, um, prices, but it has the actual seasons and stuff. So the seasons are updated through July, but, um, the tag prices are not. So hunting adult 185 is the flat fee. If you want to get the combination hunting and fishing, it's 264. So 185 okay. bare minimum. Okay. Plus a black bear tag 231.75 so what's that yeah. that total i think it's four something i'm not that good <laughs> 185 plus what 231.75 we're looking at 416, 416. yeah yep. 416 flat so or right around there um for a full priced bear tag the thing is idaho in certain units is trying to um, increase hunting. <laughs> so they, they have a reduced price. Um, I would just, in my mind, I would just say they have a, a very healthy population, healthy population. That's, that's a good way to say it. So they, they make the tags for non-residents and actually they're available for second tags, I think for yeah. residents. Um, but it's a $41 and 75 cent tag here, reduced bear and second bear. So 41 75, says reduced price to be used only in designated units, not statewide. Second to be used only in designated units, not statewide. So if we go back to that um, section of the regulations, it says residents, second tags, and the discounted tags. I think it's the same list. So it says units four, 4A, 6, 7, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 16A, 17, 19, 20, 20A, 20 26, 27, and those portions of units 21 and 28 within designated wilderness at, at the discounted price. So you can get a bear tag in Idaho for 41.75 plus your license, which is 226. So that's significantly lower than a Montana price. Yeah. And um, since there seems to be a reason to have second bear tags, it's probably... Yeah. You're going to have to still do some work to get into bear country. So if you choose, just to clarify, if you choose one of these discounted units, you could get a bear tag, not just your second tag, but your first tag for 41 bucks. And then I think you can buy a second tag as well. Yeah. Non-residents may may purchase two reduced price black bear tags for units. So Oh, what's snap. 226 plus 41, like you're at like 260, 270 for two bear tags in your pocket if you're really trying to hammer some spring bear yeah. um, in Idaho and Idaho is te- closer to where a lot of our audience resides. In, yeah. So. Just closer. Well, it um, depends on if you, if you're really just going to hunt like the Northwest region of Montana, Montana that's pretty cl- That's going to be closer to us than Boise is. Yeah. You know? Um, so I think I had a map up, but I think I left it. Hold on. You, make sure you don't pull up the Onyx with all of our pins, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were like, oh, let's bring up Onyx and uh, show them all this stuff. But it's got a lot of Yeah, got a lot of our pins on yeah. it. So, yeah, we had a, you had a regional map open for Idaho. Just kind of giving an idea. getting close here. Yep. There so, if you're going four, r- roughly four through 28, it's this section of units. Um, mm-hmm. And, for example, that right there, I think, is right around the south eastern corner of Washington or yeah. north yep. northeastern for Oregon. So that Hell's Canyon section. So if that gives you kind of a reference like um I'm pretty sure Lewiston Clarkston somewhere right in here on the map. Um and then 
I think if you look at the uh, a map of this area, actually, let's pull up. Um, where's it at? Google Earth. We'll just kind of give you guys a a visual of what that country looks like. There's no pins on Google Earth, so <laughs> actually, I might have to cut out where we were looking at last. It's going to zoom us in. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> so here I'm going to go 2d hit the North and there's Spokompton right there. Yeah, there's Spokane. So let's just say 90 goes across here. I think that's where unit four is at. Um, yeah, I 90, it shoots somewhere through here. I think it's somewhere. I, I think so too. Yeah. Right, right around here. Unit three, um, three and four. So if you go back to Google Earth, if you take I-90 and go south, it's a lot of where these reduced price tags are. Um, if you're in like unit 10, um, unit 12, let's see here, 10, 12, oh, low, 10A, low. I don't know which which exactly we're open, but anywhere in this kind of area, it's going to be really timbered and you're going to be hunting like clear cuts. Um, there's stuff up real high that's like, you're, that's going to be under snow for a lot of the year. Um, yeah. but maybe down here you're, you're looking at a clear cut that you can hunt, um, older clear cuts, reprod. That's what you're going to be looking at in kind of those zones. Um, but the further you go South. So again, if this is snake river area and then you go inland, I think this is unit 14 right here. Let's see. Yeah, unit 14, 19, 20, all of these are open. 16, 16A, Elk City. Let's see where Elk City is. I think Elk City is right here. So around Elk City, actually, it's still going to be kind of that clear-cut country. But we know that can be good. That there's holds bears, man. There's definitely bears in those areas because they're going to be where the feed is, and there's not going to be feed in old growth, dark timber. So they're going to be out. Oh, look, a bear. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> um, but then the further you go south, you get into kind of this um, breaks, um, the Salmon River country, burned uh, open country, um, unit 19 here. It's a lot of wilderness, but if you zoom in on spots, like if you're willing to pack in, that, that, looks, looks, good. that looks good. It looks like you can glass, um, pretty green. So that's kind of what the, the breakdown of units, if you were willing to pay full price and you kind of want to hunt stuff that looks like the Washington blues, like you zoom in here, there's Anatone. Here's the Winaha. So this is what the Winaha looks like, right? If you zoom over and you want to hunt unit 18, that looks like the same to me. I don't know. If, yeah. But you're, you're, country. you're paying full price. But that's full price. That. That's the yeah. 416. There. Yeah. So to me, I mean, there's bears in here, so. I don't know why you would pay full price. Um, and if you look at the, the <laughs> harvest results, there's pretty much the same amount, if not more bears. So like me and harvested. you could both go to one of those reduced price units for almost the same price of me paying full price to go to 18. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. Um, check this out. So this is a 2019 bear season. If we go by spring, um, unit 12, which is in that list, 10 and 12 have the most amount of harvested bears. But if you look... Oh, we should talk about that. There's baiting. Yeah, and that's we should a, talk a about that. Huge portion of of the the kills. Yes, absolutely. But, um, which unit's thirty nine? Where's that one at? Um, Go back to thirty nine's down near Boise. It's not open for the. It's not open for spring. No. Um, well, then why is there one hundred forty one spring? Just because it's right next to Boise, so people are hunting it. So Boise's right here. So unit thirty nine, just people can hunt it. Mm easily. So there's probably just a ton of people hunting thirty nine, and gotcha. it's there's a lot of low stuff there like kind of right where you're at it's it's greening up early so if people won't, in boise which is a huge population in idaho want to go hunt it's probably like 45 minute drive to go yeah, bear hunting so that's probably why that harvest is as high as it is um but 10 four is open four. yeah and then you look at so four there's 128 spring bears killed 89 were worth bait so there's plenty of bears being killed spot with, stock yeah spot stock and then if you go down unit 18 there's 26 bears being killed um, six of them with bait. So less, it's more open country, mm -hmm. but there's a ton of units that are open, um, for that reduced price that there's more bears being killed. 16 is above 18. There's 29 bears being killed. And I'm pretty sure that's on the list. So yep. Unit 16. So 
yeah, you man. can get away with a forty-one dollar bear tag and and have a pretty good hunt. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, um, absolutely. We might even buy two tags and just. I think so. Ma- Hammer. Maybe them. we should try doing um, like clear cut country and yeah. more open glassable packing yeah, country. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, if we were closer, I'd, I'd even be willing to like just give a try at baiting. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, to like, kind well, of I mean, learn the ins and outs. Technically, I mean, I'm in Spokane. It's probably like an hour and a half to yeah, get. And into you could jump over there to ten but, pretty quickly. Yeah, uh, ten or four. I think that four is probably closer up. It's like right across from you. Yeah. Um, go, go set up a bait stand at four or, or whatever, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, yeah. It's probably what a half an hour from you. Yeah. Well, not a half hour unit f- was unit five open. I keep forgetting the list. No, unit five is not. So unit four is, I think the closest one and that's probably an hour, hour drive yeah. from where I'm at in Spokane. So, uh, I could get away with baiting. Um, yeah. Dan hunts in the panhandle. A lot of people know where he, he's at. So yeah. if you follow Dan, Elk Shape Dan uh, Staten, he he does both. He, he spot and stocks and baits. And I think most of the bears he kills, he ends up spot and stocking. So, and it's later in the year too. He I've been hunting with him and he spots bears at the end of April. And um, he likes shooting them with bows off of off of uh, logging roads. So mm. Well, we did, uh, we did a, a couple, we did a story. I, I didn't do it very soon. So we only have a couple questions, but we'll just answer them. Other than hunting South and Southeast facing slope with feed, do you guys have any other helpful tips for spring bear? I think we kind of kind of covered that, that already. already. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that with baiting, I've never baited. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can go to restaurants that are like tossing out old food and they just give it to you. Really? That's on, a good tip. Um, like bakeries, like yeah. if you go to like the Fran, the local Fran's bakery and they have yeah. like all the stuff that went bad yeah. or like past price. I bet you Bob would still eat it. <laughs> Probably on the way there. <laughs> give me a maple bar. There's a maple bar. <laughs> oh man. How does spring forage differ from fall? What kind of elevations are you looking targeting for spring? elevations yeah that's all going to depend on on snowpack on snowpack yeah um again we kind of went over that yeah start low move up the the snow line yeah um i'm trying to think yeah just google snowpack map and then it'll give you an idea of where the snow's at and then start at the elevation that you can kind of gauge from where that is and then it's just eyes on ground. You're going to get there and be like, oh, this looks like a bear could be eating the grass and, and bushes and stuff here yeah. versus at the top. It's probably going to be like grayed out. All the stuff's dead. Um, maybe a couple little green shoots are coming out, but you want that stuff like sprouting because they don't want to work for a couple nibbles of yeah. new grass. They want to be. And then down in, in so. the unit that uh, Janie drew and down in the blues, I know uh, they were hammering the wild onions and yep. I'm not sure what time of year they'll start popping. I would say it's probably late May. May. I think end of April, actually. Okay. End of April, mid May. They yeah. start pot, they depending start on the elevation. Too. Exactly, yeah. depending on elevation. We were in the Wanaha. It was like they were shooting. You mm-hmm. know, like we were having. They're they were just budding, and yeah. but we were getting wild onions, and, and that was late May. But that was also at six thousand. We should do that too. Make like a yeah. a stir fry, a stir fry fajita with oh, wild onions. Dude, it'd be it would take a lot of work. It would. They're, they're, they're like tiny, dude. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the last one was what about a fall bear podcast? What's fall bear questions? Uh, of course, we're gonna get around to that, but um, not yet. We're gonna focus on spring bear we probably have a couple more spring bear podcasts coming on we'll probably get some guests that are uh very active maybe cool to get dan on talk about baiting yeah um that'd be fun and then just some i know he gets tired of it he does I'm it sure. and then he's like ah, i yeah. don't want to sit here yeah. when i could be quadding around exactly i'm bears, sure man so. that, that's how i am too man like it'd be to me it's like sitting in the watering hole for elk or something but very effective I'm pretty sure his it's his uh husband's wife so his mother or um, his husband's wife? No, his uh, his dad's wife. Sorry, I'm all, I'm all <laughs> his dad's wife. Um, okay, she shot a monster bear off of off of a bait down there, like a really really big bear. Like oh wow, he could barely deadlift the bear, and you Shut know up. how much Stan can lift. Wow. So he showed me pictures of that thing, and it's it's a monster. So wow. and they, I think it was it's when she was when she was quadding out with it on. It was like waiting down the back of the quad when <laughs> right now. So it can, especially with a rifle too, cause it doesn't make you sit a tree stand next to the bait. So if you set a bait out in a kind of a secluded area that you can watch from like a, a road or a vantage point and oh, just okay. sit two, 300, 400 yards off of the bait, they're going to have no idea if the wind's like really good in your favor. That's a good point. They're going to hop on that, um, that bait. And I, should we go over baiting rules if someone's sure. actually close enough? Absolutely. Um, 
I'm sure if someone wants to uh, dedicate some time to it, maybe uh, we'll introduce them to it. So yeah, hit it up. There's got to be a baiting license and fee permit. Yep. Baiting permit. So baiting permits, all persons placing bait must possess a baiting permit issued by fishing game. I believe you have to like let them know where your site is, right? Yeah. Let's see. Baiting permits will be valid valid in the calendar year for which they are issued. A hunter may possess only one fishing game baiting permit each year and maintain up to three bait sites. Um, bait site tags are valid for spring and fall season in the calendar year for which they are issued. No person may hunt over an unlawful bait site. Guides and clients of outfitters are not required to obtain a baiting permit, but they must have a copy of the outfitter's permit in their possession while hunting over bait site. Um, is that it? It's a lot of bait. Just type in, uh, try baiting permits. Should I get a price? Wolf hunting rules. Wolves may be taken incidentally to bear baiting. It is unlawful to hunt wolves within 200 yards of the perimeter of any designated dump or sanitary landfill. So you can shoot a wolf off a barrack. That's what it's. I think that's what it says. Wolves may be taken incidentally to bear baiting. So like they're coming in. I don't know. That's very, that's that is, too, that's, yeah, that's, that's, too, that's gray, too gray. It is. A I don't like it. Um, I'm just clicking on stuff. Bait, bait for trapping is any animal parts except bleach bones or liquid scent. Um, I bet you they had to write it in there like that gray because I didn't want like I think it's um it's too with uh um like if someone's coming into a trapping site for wolves because you can trap wolves mm. or if you're walking into your bait site and a wolf pops up like and it's on the bait you can shoot I it. think they're saying you can shoot it but <laughs> you're not supposed to like sit there and make a bait <laughs> specifically for like have like a carcass like <laughs> hanging from a tree for wolves versus bears will eat anything. Like. If a bear, if a wolf comes into your bear bait site, you can shoot it. You can shoot it. You That's, can't just go specifically bait for wolves. I would say do more research. We're not telling you to go do that. So. Yeah, definitely. Maybe throw a, a wolf tag in your pocket. Let's see here. What's the price for a wolf? Thirty one seventy five. So it expires June thirtieth. So I'm if the season's open, throw the season's a wolf. open. Throw yeah. a wolf in there. Yeah. That'd be fun. Just All right, guys. Yeah. Well, thanks for tuning into this one. Uh, it was a fun one. Uh, the first one with video. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll be doing more of this going forward. Definitely. Uh, as far as uh, I'm sure right around the corner is big game applications. We'll kind of break down big game applications for Washington, kind of show people how we do it. Um, yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. I'm ready to hunt some spring bear. Me too, man. And we're going to get out for turkeys. It's going to uh, be a good spring. So Yeah, let's turn this damn thing off and figure out where we're going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, have a good uh, rest of your weekend.